this lesson, we will focus on natural products derived from plants. If you've ever gone on a walk with a botanist, you might note that they use different senses, sight, touch, and smell in the identification process. Smell and taste can yield big clues as to the chemical makeup of plants found in certain groups. Plants make compounds known as primary and secondary metabolites. Here, we'll examine the role of plant secondary metabolites in chemical ecology before diving into how these compounds can be leveraged for use in human medicine in later lessons. The first step to understanding the basics of plant chemistry is to distinguish between primary metabolites and secondary metabolites. Much early research in the plant sciences was dedicated to the investigation of primary metabolites, which are necessary for the basic growth and development of a plant. Metabolism is defined as a chemical process that occur in living organisms to maintain life. Examples of primary plant metabolites include carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and nucleic acids. Due to their critical and essential role in maintaining life, these compounds are ubiquitous or found in all plants. One need only recall the introductory lessons in plant biology and the topics of photosynthesis, plant growth, and development to think of instances in which primary metabolites are produced. Note that some primary metabolites can also serve as the starting pieces or precursors to secondary metabolites. Secondary metabolites, on the other hand, serve an entirely different purpose for plants. Within their complex genetic code lies the recipe for making a great variety of structurally complex and bioactive molecules. Secondary metabolites are defined as organic compounds that are not directly involved in the basic survival of the organism, such as for growth, development, or reproduction. Production of secondary metabolites comes at an additional cost to the plant, and thus they are not produced without reason. Imagine a walk through the produce section of the grocery store. Do you see a variety of colors among the produce? How about when you cut open some of the fruit? Do the smells differ? How about the taste? The differences in flavor, smell, and color between an apple and an orange all come down to differences in the unique composition of their secondary metabolites. Now think about a related species in the same genus, like a lemon, or citrus lemon, and an orange, citrus sinensis. While the overall smell and taste are somewhat similar, you'll also note distinctions in their color and taste. And this is all thanks to secondary metabolites. So why do plants make these compounds? One undeniable barrier to plant survival is the fact that they are sessile or non-mobile, and thus individual plants cannot move toward necessary resources or away from potential threats. Instead, plants use their unique chemical arsenal of secondary metabolites to either attract or deter other organisms as needed in order to increase the chances of their shot at survival. More specifically, plants use these compounds for defense against predation and herbivory, competitive warfare with other competing organisms in the community, and attracting pollinators and seed dispersers. Chemical ecology is the scientific study of chemical signaling between organisms in an ecosystem. You might be wondering, what does chemical ecology have to do with plant chemistry? Well, it has everything to do with plant chemistry. Most secondary metabolites serve in the role of chemical signals. They're used by plants to signal organisms to approach, such as in attracting a bee to pollinate their flowers, or by signaling organisms to be deterred, such as producing toxic or bad tasting compounds in their leaves. All of these factors are key in enabling plants the best shot at survival. Plant secondary metabolites are ultimately responsible for the colors, flavors, and odors of different plant parts. Each metabolite serves a very specific role for each plant part. 
For example, the bright yellows and oranges in many fruits and flowers are made possible by the presence of flavonoids. And these compounds are present in the reproductive parts for a reason, to attract pollinators and seed dispersers. Such a chemical makeup would not be necessary, for example, in the root tissue of the same plant. Instead, metabolites with antimicrobial activities would be more useful to the plant in that location. The take home message here is that plants do not invest the energy and resources necessary for production of secondary metabolites without reason. They each serve a very special role for the organism. And plant chemical signaling in the environment represents a rich territory for new scientific research and exploration. Take a look at the plants that are growing in your neighborhood. How many distinct colors and aromas do you notice? Observe how insects and birds interact with the different plant species. There's so much that you can learn just by making some simple observations.